everybody coming to you with a special remix video today. And today we are remixing uh, Ladies Who List Atlanta with our How to Get Married in a Year um, series that I've been doing. So you don't need to have watched Ladies Who List Atlanta because I just use it as a reference point because we're really crossing over two things that merge together. And so we're, we're crossing over the reality TV show Ladies Who List with my own original content, which is Get Married in One Year. So we're going to talk about the synergies between real estate and getting married because there are a lot of things that line up and there are a lot of lessons to learn from real estate to sort of parlay over into your road if you want to get married or even thinking about getting married. So first of all, the reason I like real estate and sort of crossing it over with the road to marriage is because there are so many similarities. First of all, everybody knows real estate is an investment. And you know what? So is marriage. Marriage is an investment. That's why when folks be getting divorced, they're like, uh-uh, after all this investment I done made into this man or this woman, uh-uh, uh-uh, no, this is a, I've invested a lot. And it's the same thing with marriage. It is an investment. The other part of it is there's risk involved. There's risk in investing in real estate. And you know what? There is risk in marriage. And that's why a lot of people don't even get married because honestly, a lot of people are scared. They are really scared to get married because they're so busy looking at all the horror stories of marriage and people who got divorced and this or that. So it scares them so much that they don't even enter the game of marriage. And I'm saying never let fear stop you because what do they say? It's better to have love and loss than to not have love at all. Now, should you take precautions? Do, do you need to do thorough vetting? Do you need to put things in place to limit your risk so you don't just lose everything? Absolutely. And, but that's what you should do in anything. But marriage is absolutely an investment. So one of my, so on this show, um, Ladies Who List, it opened up with one of the brokers. Her name is Robin. And she crazy, y'all. I don't know if you watch the show, but she is like, that shit crazy. But anyway, she opened up. And as you know, in real estate, real estate agents can represent two different people. They can represent you when you're a seller, when you're selling your home, and they can represent you when you're a buyer and when you're going out buying a home. So as I said in all my videos, ladies, 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 you are always the seller and men are the buyers. And the reason that's important is because if you are the seller, you have to have a different sales pitch than if you are the buyer. And this lady, Robin, she was representing the buyer. So she was basically showing the buyer um, this condo uh, that was for sale. And she was basically saying, OK, um, you know, if you buy this condo, you know, you should think about buying this condo because, you know, you could, you know, you're over here renting right now and you could be building equity over here if you buy this condo instead. And then maybe in three or four years, once you want to maybe go on and have a family or something, you could sell this condo and, you know, you would have built up some equity and then you could sell the condo and you could make money. So that was basically her sales pitch because she says she works with a lot of first time buyers. So she has to talk to them about the value of owning real estate and how that works for you. And then what she's the reason why she's starting with that sales pitch is because she wants the, the person to put in an offer because that's how she gets paid. She don't get paid unless they put in an offer and then she don't get paid unless the offer is accepted. But that was her pitch as a representing the buyer. Now, when you look at dating, a lot of us have to look at a lot of us. Well, a lot of you because I'm married, but a lot of you have to look at what is your sales pitch? And one thing I can say when I like talk to ladies, sometimes their sales pitch is whack. Sometimes they don't even have a sales pitch. You know, sometimes I listen to the Kevin Samuel show and then they'll he'll be asking them, like, what value do you bring? What value do you bring? And I hear these women say, oh, you know, I can cook, you know, um, I can clean. And I'm thinking, what? How is that enough value for some man to take the risk and the investment of marriage. Remember, buyers are investing in real estate. Buyers, the men, are investing in you, women, also, which are the sellers. Why is the, your ability to cook and clean worth all the risk it is involved in when it comes to getting married or buying real estate? Some of you ladies really have not given enough thought 
to your sales pitch. And you know why you haven't given much thought to it? Because all this time, you guys thought you were the buyers. So the, the pitch you have that's really good is the pitch of what you want, right? Because when you're a buyer, you go out and say, well, I want this. I want a three bedroom. I want, you know, granite countertops. I want at least a 5,000 square foot house. I want, 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 right? That is the pitch of a seller. And so what happens is when someone comes to you and says to you, well, what are you bringing? What they're really saying is, what are you selling? What's your sales pitch? And about, about your tie tongue. You don't even have an answer because you haven't thought about it. It doesn't mean you don't have value, but you haven't thought about it. You've spent too much coming up with your sales pitch as a buyer and you haven't worked on your sales pitch as a seller. And the other part of it is some women I realized they actually don't even know the true value of a wife. They've, lim they've limited wifehood to be about cooking, cleaning, and servicing the man sexually. And that is not, that is absolutely not true. I mean, if you look, I don't know, you know, I watch all the reality TV shows. I don't know if you guys watch Love and Marriage Huntsville, but every, you know, the big scandal that happened, you know, Martell was up here cheating with the other woman, blah, 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 all this kind of stuff. Well, one of the biggest things that came out of that was after they split up and they divided everything, people started realizing how much of this marriage um, Melody Hope really contributed, right? They start to figure out, dang, everyone thought it was Martell or that they were doing it together, but they underestimated the value of Melody to the marriage. And you know what? We all know Martell was a fool and you know what? People were wondering if he loved Coastal so much, why didn't he just divorce Melody and go over there? Because you know what? Even though he was foolish enough not to treasure it, he actually knew what it was. And he realizes over here was one thing, but over here was a whole other thing. You know, but that's a fool of a man. You don't want to marry no fool of a man because a fool of a man don't know. He does not know how to uh, pros and cons, risk versus reward. So that was why, you know, his stuff was horrible. But anyway, the point of the matter is women have to know what their true value is. And you have to know what you can bring to the table for that man. Now, here's the trick. You can't have no generic answer, right? You just, you really have to know your buyer. For instance, this lady Robin, before she took this man out to look at condos, you know what she had to sit down and do? She had to sit down and talk to him. She had to figure out what it was he was looking for. She didn't just go take him out and show him all kinds of houses. No, she had to talk to him and say, you know, what are you looking for? What do you want? You know, what would make you happy? All these types of things. So then she could know what to sell him. And that's what you ladies need to do. Some ladies are going on dates and talking to men and the women are talking all about themselves, their careers, their jobs, what they want in life. They go around asking men, what's their vision? What's their vision? When you ask a person what their vision is, that's you hunting to figure out what can you get from them. But you know when you are a buyer, you know what the question you ask? Instead of saying, what's your vision? You ask, what are your dreams? You see what I'm saying? You ask a man what his dreams are. Because when you ask a man what his dreams are, you're getting into what's in his heart, what he truly desires, what he needs, right? And that's the part that you want to tap into. When we talk about ready to love and what um, Phil said that time about a city, about um, how she's providing something he needs versus necessarily what he wants. When you start tapping into a person's needs, that's when you start crafting a place in their life. That's the other thing. When I hear women all the time, I don't need a man, but I want a man. Ah, ah, ah. Stop saying that, ladies. Stop saying that. You may even believe that, but stop saying it. No man wants a woman that simply wants him. They, a man wants a woman that needs him. And I'm not talking about you're so helpless that if the man left, you'd be destitute and homeless in the street. No, because one thing men know about women, we can be fickle. 
We can want the picture hung over here today. We can want the change and have the picture hung over here tomorrow. I could want these walls in my house gray and tomorrow and next year I'd be like, I'm sick of gray, honey. I want, can we paint the house back white? Men know that and they don't want to, you to be fickle in your love to them. They want a woman that needs them, right? So that a woman can't live without them. A man doesn't want to invest and invest in you for you all of a sudden to change your wants and all of a sudden you don't want him anymore. No. A man wants a woman that needs him. So all these women out here who are financially independent or whatever, else, I don't care. Stop saying you don't need a man because first of all, it's not true. So, but even if you thought it was true, stop saying it. It is not a good sales pitch, right? So when a when a, you're on a date and a man says, well, "Why why are you why are you married?" And he said, "Well, I don't really need a, I don't really need a man, but I want a man." Uh uh. Stop saying that. Stop saying that. But ladies, you have got to get your sales pitch better. Get a better sales pitch. I'm going to give credit to one of my subscribers because you know what? She had one of the best little one-liners up in here that I've seen in a long time. Thank you for everybody who comments. But her comment was, act like an angel so a man can find heaven in you. ding a link, ding, 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 ding. That is a winner. Now, that's a sales pitch. Act like being an angel so that a man can find heaven in you. Let me tell you, that is a winning sales pitch and you can add on to that. You know what? Talk to other wives, find out what their true value is in a marriage. Talk about that when you have a stable home life, when a man has a stable home life, you know what? It allows him to take more risk in other places. It allows him to take more risk in whether he, in building a business or his own business. Even if he's in corporate America, it allows him to take more risk and climb in corporate America. When you have stability in life, when he's not out here having to chase other women, date other women, worried about all that, you know what he can do? He can concentrate more on the things he wants to accomplish in life. His dreams. You know what I'm saying? When you take stress away from people, like you know, women, we know this in our own lives. When stress is taken away from us, when, when we have a level of peace, we are more creative. We are more productive. This is the value of a wife. What you're able to do for a man is so much more than cook, clean, and sex. But you got to know from that man, the man that you're talking to, the one that you're interested in, what adds value to his life. There's some general things, but you know the way you get more targeted is, is you talk to that man and you ask questions. Not interrogation, not for you trying to figure out, you know, do you want to be with him or all this other kind of stuff. You know, men sense that. Oh, I felt like I was on an interview with her. She was asking me a hundred questions. Men don't like that because they already know you're here trying to get something from them. Instead, come with a level of curiosity of where you're thinking about how you can add value. Okay, when you add value to someone's life, I'm telling you, you become priceless, priceless. And that's what you want to be. You want to be a wife who is priceless, where no amount of money, no man can get no amount of money offered to you. And they're like, nope, I ain't letting her go because, because she is priceless to me. Anyway, that's it, y'all. Work on your sales pitch and make sure you watch my episode one of my video, How to Get Married in One Year, because I'm going to be recording the next episode um, coming up soon. Okay, talk to you later. Bye.